Welcome to another video guys. So today I've run into a slight issue with my RAM. It's actually not running at the speeds that I thought it was running at. So today we're gonna to be doing a little troubleshooting and I think I've kind of already narrowed down the issue and I'm gonna share it with you guys so in case you are having the same issue or you're in the same scenario as me, you can also solve it yourself. But it comes down to the main issue of not matching your RAM sticks. And if you don't have the exact same RAM sticks, they'll pretty much be auto set to the lowest speeds they both can run at. So my issue here, and on the computer, I'm gonna bring up my shared screen here. You'll see these are the two different sets of RAM that I have. Now, from first appearance, they look identical. It just looks like they have a different heatsink. We have the Corsair Vengeance RGB Pro, and then we have the Corsair Vengeance LPX. And so both of these are running 3200 megahertz advertised C16 desktop memory, two times eight kits. So they're both, they're all eight gigabyte sticks, DDR4, 3200 C16 memory. And you think that all sounds great, it matches identically. But the problem with this is that 3200 megahertz is only 3200 megahertz when you're running the XMP profile. You can see here, if you scroll down, the Corsair Vengeance RGB Pro's standard speeds do not match the standard speeds of the Vengeance Pro. So you'll see the standard speed of the Vengeance RGB Pro is 2666. But if you go to the Vengeance LPX, the standard speed of that one is listed as a lower 2133. So they don't actually match their standard speeds. And since they don't match their standard speeds, this can also mess things up. So pretty much when you're ever trying to run RAM together, it has to be identical if you want it to be running at the speeds that it's advertised as. This works and my system is on and running, but my speeds are a lot slower. So as you can see here in CPU-Z, the DRAM frequency is set at 1066.4. Now, don't worry, that is not the speed you're at because this is DDR. So DDR is double data rate RAM. And if you wanna know a little bit more about DDR and the differences in those, I have another video for that. But in real short, basically double data rate RAM sends data on the rising and the falling signal on each clock cycle. So you actually have to just multiply that number by two and that'll be the number that you actually are running at. So for this RAM frequency, 1066.4 times two is roughly 2132.8. So it is running at the lower speed that the other LPX RAM was advertised as, 2133 megahertz. So it's not even running at the 2666 that the uh, RGB Pro one was advertised at as its standard because they have to match. They have to be running at the same speed and it's always gonna choose the lower of the two speeds. Now, I have tried setting this up in the XMP profile and that didn't really go as planned as even when I do it, the system beeps a lot, ends up restarting a couple times and then I'm pretty sure it just ends up going back to the default because when I go into CPU-Z, it's still set at the 1066.4 still. So, what I ended up doing was getting another set of the RGB Pro RAM. We're gonna go ahead, swap this out, run the XMP profile with two or four identical sticks and see if that fixes the problem, which it likely should. So let's go ahead and shut down the computer here. And while that shuts down, we're gonna go ahead and get our RAM ready. We're gonna just pop out the old ones, the LPX ones, and put in these identical sets. And then we're just gonna boot back up and see if we can go into the BIOS and change all that to the XMP profile and see if it actually loads up properly. We are powered down now. I'm just gonna go ahead and unplug the power. Wait until this light goes off to, there we go. So we know that there's no more power in the system. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and actually turn my case on its side here. So give me one second. All right, that's much better. I can actually work on the computer now. <laughs> so let's just... One out. Out. Now we got the new kit here. There they are. And let's pop these. Make sure the notch is aligned correctly. One in. And second one's in. Just want to give them a little wiggle just to make sure they're all firmly in. And at least now they all match. <laughs> now time for the moment of truth. We got our new RAM sticks installed into the computer. Let's go ahead and power it on. So as you can see there, it's good. All the RAM sticks are lighting up, so that is a good sign. Let's move over to the actual computer here and wait for a post. There we go, that's good. Got the post. Hit NF2. There we go. Let's get into the BIOS here. There we are, perfect. There's all of our RAM total memory to our DRAM frequency here. 
As you can see here, we also have the XMP settings here. We're gonna go ahead and enable that for the DDR4-3200. So that is enabled now, and you can see here it actually bumped up the voltage force automatically to 1.35 instead of 1.2. So we're gonna go ahead and save this. We're gonna save and exit and reboot and see if we actually are running at all those speeds now that we have the identical sets in. Still at 1066 for some reason. All right, so I've done some tests and I don't know exactly what's wrong and I might be happy just keeping it this way, but for whatever reason, when I run the XMP profile at 3200, it's not stable and it's not working. The computer will end up beeping a ton, restarting multiple times, and then I'm pretty sure it just ends up resetting to the default because it's not actually posting with that higher clock speed because the memory is not stable at that point or something, I'm not sure. But what I did was I manually went in there and changed it just to 3000. So it's not 2166 like it was before, which is a lot slower, but it's not the 3200 they advertise I did just change it to 3000 and as you see here we are posted and we are in CPUZ and we are running at basically 1500 and remember you have to double this so that 1500 megahertz is actually on double data rate RAM so it's actually 3000 so the 3000 megahertz overclock actually did work uh, I might try to bump this up to maybe 3100 or so but for whatever reason the 3200 one is not working uh, and I am curious now if I do take my old RAM, would it have worked the entire time? And was it just the fact that 3200 wasn't stable? Um, so I might actually mess around with that and put the old RAM back in and do that. But at the same time, I already have the new RAM and it's all nice and shiny and new. So I might just keep that, which I just noticed. It's hard to tell, but only the two left ones are lit up right now. So we're gonna go into the software here and configure that and see if we can get them all lit up. All right, I ended up figuring it out. Actually, it was just in the settings here. I had it set since I originally only had the two there. I only had two of them set to actually be lit on. So once I change that in the software, it's kind of hard to see, but we have all four lit up now. So that's all good. But we're gonna go ahead and run the old RAM in there real quick. We're gonna test if the speeds actually work. And then after that, I'm probably just gonna go ahead and throw my new RAM back in and sell this old one. All right, guys, we're back. And I have found out some, I guess, good and bad news. So <laughs> I put my old memory back in. As you can see here, I have the, the new sticks over here. And I went ahead and applied the 3000 megahertz overclock and it worked. So looks like I didn't even have to buy a new memory. It actually didn't matter that they were slightly off different speeds because they both were rated at higher speeds and they had the same voltage and everything else was about them was pretty much identical. So I guess this can work in situations for you. You don't have to have them match exactly as long as everything else pretty much matches. Um, either way though, I'm pretty sure I'm just gonna end up keeping the new ones anyways, just because it looks nicer to have all four, but I was able to get up to 3000 megahertz instead of the 3200. Not exactly sure why it's not going to let me get to 3200 at a stable rate. I might have to increase the voltage, but I really don't feel like messing with that. And the XMP profile is supposed to kind of already be stable and the manufacturer is supposed to already know the settings because it pulls it off the stick itself. Um, the, the, all the settings the BIOS has to set it to. So for whatever reason, 3200 isn't working. I might have to try updating my BIOS here, um, but that's a whole other process and that's always gets iffy. So for now though, I'm happy with 3000 over 3200, not a big deal. I did try to overclock it one more time to, I think it was 3166 or 3133. It was the next step down from 3200 um, and that didn't work either. That also crashed it and it just ended up resetting it to the 1066 that it was originally. Um, so we're just gonna keep it at 3000. Uh, fun to know though that <laughs> it actually did work for the old RAM as well, as long as it was that close. It was very similar. I mean, they both have the same timings and everything. So that's probably a one-off scenario where most likely if you're using totally separate manufactured RAM with totally different settings, it's not gonna work. But these were close enough to where it actually did work and I didn't have to buy a new set. But either way, I'm gonna keep it just because they look better and I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall it and set it up again. But I'll run at 3000 and be happy because before I was actually running at the old 2133 or whatever that was. So either way, I'm getting a nice 30% boost in, or 50% boost in performance off the speeds of my RAM at least. So I'll be happy with that. I'll stick with it. Uh, but that's it for this video, guys. I hope you had fun joining me in this little adventure, kind of checking this stuff out. And I hope you learned something on the way if you do have memory issues or maybe you're trying to boost your memory as well. A lot of times memory can be a little finicky, but looks like this case, it just wasn't stable around those 3200 megahertz clocks. So I'm just gonna keep it at 3000. But hope you guys enjoyed. Leave a like if you like videos like this and you want me to do more, just kind of at home set up kind of troubleshooting or just upgrading my systems. And I'll be happy to post some more like this, but I'll see you guys in the next one.